The broadcast is now starting. Please remain in your seats and keep your tray tables up and your seats up. Who actually reclines their seats anyway? What kind of monster are you? Welcome. I, you really I, rec you do not recline your airline seats. You just lost your entire audience. They, if the person in front of me can recline, I can recline too. Oh, uh, you uh, are a monster. Just saying. I don't use it often, but when I flew with sickness, I felt it was appropriate. My lord. Well, anybody who was going to hang out, we I understand. Like, I didn't know I was dealing with this kind of personality. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I get it. <laughs> Welcome to the October Spooky Time Trimark webcast. My name is Danny Nikoski. I uh, do some operations stuff here at Trimark, and I am joined by Jake Hildreth, service lead for our Active Directory Security Assessment, ADSA for short. And it is the spooky time. It is October. Welcome to all the ghosts and goblins are in the really weird eyes that I made Jake put on his title slide. Uh, so he crazy. is doing that under duress. Uh, he did not do that. You can blame me for it, but I don't care because I like it. Uh, thank you, everybody, for joining. We try to do these at least once a month, and uh, I shanghaied Jake into this quite a while ago. Uh, him and I were talking. By the way, before we even get into that, if you have missed our previous webcast, if you want to be notified of what we have coming up, uh, trymarksecurity.com to sign up for our newsletter. Uh, if you got the blast today and signed up, thank you so much for reading your email. Um, and for all of our past webcasts and videos, you can get that at hub.trimarksecurity.com, also up on our YouTube. And oh my, what is, I have a different Trimark site on my screen, trimarkvision.com. I wonder, I wonder what that's about. Maybe we'll talk about it a little bit later. I what don't know. What could that be? What could TrimarkVision.com possibly be? And why would it be of interest to people in the next quarter and launching in January? Uh, so, yeah, that's weird. That site never comes up. That's brand new. TrimarkVision.com. <laughs> um, so after our last webcast with uh, Brandon Colley, uh, he did his uh, top five Trimark findings. I tapped Jake immediately, and I was like, what about this? What what could we talk about? You've done so, Jake. You've done. Can you even name how many assessments you've done over your career here? Personally, uh, I want to say in the twenty five range. Personally, in the twenty. However, range. we will talk about how many I've actually seen a little later. Um. So I mean, so seeing that. It's, you know, it's usually, that's, it's, to me, it's a benefit. So I started my career as a consultant and seeing a lot of different environments. You know, you don't normally get the really drilled down deep you get if you're like on an internal team, you, like you live in that company, you've been there for a long time. But the upside to being a consultant, you see a lot of different stuff a lot of times. And I was like, Jake, you could probably, you could write, how much of a report could you possibly write having never actually seen a scoping for a company and just talking with them for, you know, however long it would take to, to get that idea, how much of a report percentage wise could you write having never actually stepped foot into their environment? And he was like, Oh, most of it. Uh, and, you know, cause Jake is cocky like that. So I said, well, why yep. don't, yep. why don't we put your Trimark paycheck money where your mouth is and do a webcast about, all the things Jake could tell you about your environment by never even so much as getting a log into it, right? Is that what this is about, Jake? Right. That's kind of what this is about. It is about assessing your Active Directory without ever actually seeing your Active Directory. So, yeah. And by the way, for any questions anybody has, we do have a chat function. We don't have, unfortunately, we don't have a live chat like we do on our Friday uh, uh, Twitch happy hours. But if you have questions for Jake, you can uh, put them in a little questions box in the UI uh, for, for good webcast. And I will relay them to Jake uh, any manner. It doesn't really matter what it is. Uh, and as we do links and things like that, I will be sure to put them in the chat. There's also a handout for everybody who's joining today. Uh, Scott Blake, our director of services, just republished uh, an updated blog on um, uh, LDAP channel binding. Uh, that is a PDF as a handout for you. Just click a link in your handout thing and that's yours. You're the first people to see it. I haven't even posted it yet. Uh, I wanted to thank everybody for, for coming so you can see it first. But without further ado, uh, we're gonna get to see Jake uh, be a magician of sorts. 
<laughs> part magician, part psychiatrist. Carnival part... Barker. Uh, mostly Carnival Barker, yeah, correct. So what are we going to talk about today? We are going to talk about the things that I'm looking for when I talk to you uh, during a scoping call or a kickoff call, the indicators of, of that's going to tell me what your environment is like without ever, you know, setting eyes on it. Uh, those are generally size, age, and the personnel that's driving that assessment. Um, and then we're going to dig into uh, common findings that I see across all environments. And this is really the bulk of how I could write a report. I mentioned this later, but you know, we all Active Directory kind of lives in the same ecosystem. As you know, special and unique snowflakes that they all are, uh, there's still like a really broad base of things that everybody is doing poorly. Yeah, it's it's one of those things that where yes, we like to treat, and you'll get to this later, painting with too wide of a brush and things like that. Yeah. It, there's there's no care taken there, right? There is no one size fits all. You don't walk into an environment just assuming, but there are markers for as much as you are that unique little crystal snowflake, there's even more that you share in common with other other companies in your vertical, similar sizes. And there's a lot of nuance to this, right? There's a lot of gray area about, yeah. you know, one size can't possibly fit all. A 20 no. person company is not gonna have the same risk and things like that. As a as a thousand person company, but you're still gonna have a lot of things, especially when Jake. The spoiler alert gets to things like defaults and things like that, like yep. sins we're all guilty of. So, yep. but, uh, then, but yeah, uh, as as Jake goes through this, we, he's gonna he's gonna preface this going, I haven't seen this, but I'm willing to bet if I see X marker, these things are going to follow. Yep, yep, for sure. Uh, and then we do have some less common findings that are like happen at the more extreme ends of the scale. So, you know, if you've got a really immature environment or a really mature environment, those have their own sort of uh, common setups. They're, they're less common than the things you see everywhere, but they are still common in those specific uh, situations. So why should you care about this? Well, <laughs> I'm a magician. Danny says, I'm able to uh, divine all so I have no idea what you're talking about. Come on now, come on I now. I know to do with this side. I'd... <laughs> I am a magician because I work for Trimark, and I have a ton of, honestly, just a ton of people helping me out uh, in this role of being, oh man, it's doing the thing. There it is. All right, cool. I am, <laughs> like, what as a Danny said. graphic for that. <laughs> uh as Danny said um you know i i do lead the uh, adsa so you know handle uh basically managing the program where it's going do some basic development handle large complex assessments but then more importantly those last three uh bullet points are kind of explain how i've gotten this knowledge i assist with almost every single adsa uh that has happened in the last year um, and I have been a part of the quality assurance process essentially since I started here two years ago. And in that time, seen basically 150 environments ranging from as small as about 45 users, yes, 45 users, up to the one that I'm handling right now, which is a million users. So got a really good uh, range of what's going on here. So that being said, I am not magic. I am not a wizard. This is not occult knowledge. I mean, talk about false advertising, right? I know. I'm sorry. It's the the classic bait and switch going on here. But all this stuff that I'm going to talk to you about, it's all pretty straightforward and and pretty easy to understand. And that means that vendors out there can also pick it up. And that means those vendors are going to try to sell you stuff that sounds good to your maturity level, but may not actually be the best fit. So just Keep that in mind as we're going through here. Uh, but more importantly, like attackers can also sense this stuff a mile away and they will be able to home in on issues that you may not even know you have and and go for you know your soft underbelly. Well, there's such so, mysticism, right, Jake, around atta like attackers and 
like AP as somebody in charge of our marketing, I try not to do this. I try not to fud it up, you know, the fear, the uncertainty, the doubt. But there's this whole mythos around it that like somehow it's magic and and they got they that they know something that you couldn't possibly ever know that they're pulling from the depths of the deep web to for these trickery and things. And you're right, it is not a whole lot different than how vendors will try to scare you too. Uh, yep. Except the vendors try to get the money first, and the attackers get the money later through ransomware. But really, same kind of tradecraft. Exactly, exactly. So again, while you're listening to me ramble on, just take stock of your own environment, see how many things apply to you. And uh, and before we go any further, I, I want to say, and, and Danny did bring this up, we're painting with a very broad brush here. We always have environments that surprise us. We've come into environments that were at the top end of what we thought would just be really bad. And then, hey, this actually worked out pretty well. And then we've had other environments where, you know, large company, lots of money going into their security and IT budgets and nothing is done right. So it, speaking in generalities, right? So let's dig into that first indicator. What do you think it is, Danny? You know, I I did read your slides, but I have I have the memory of a of a mushroom. So um, it is size. It is size. That is the general indicator about what's going to happen in an environment. So we like to I like to break into like four groups. So very small. We're talking less than a thousand users. Small. That's a thousand to five thousand. Medium. We're doing five thousand to a hundred thousand. That's a that's a giant range. And then the very large environments, which are 100,000 plus. So like I said, we, we handle all sizes here, so we could talk about them uh, you know, pretty confidently. So this is the first thing that as you, the thing that you will, that you do know right off the bat is this size is X amount of users. I am now going to make these educated assumptions about what I'm about to see. That's right. So with this very small environment, I am, I'm, I'm guessing you are likely very mature. And the reason for that is because generally a very small environment, it's so small that you can secure it without having to find processes in place. Don't even need a separate security team. Like it's literally so small that like a small admin team or one heavily overworked, uh, amazing admin um, could handle it all by themselves. And more importantly, some of the, the hard issues that we talk about later, they can be resolved simply by just like replacing non-compliant equipment or really just, you know, turning stuff off and seeing who screams. Um, then we move on to the small environments. So that's like a thousand to 5,000 users, right? This is where things start to go off the rails generally. This is where a separate security team starts to appear. And if the admin team is working well with the security team, generally the environment is great. But at that point, there's still the chance that like you have security policies and maintenance processes in place, but they are, they are just loosely defined. They may not cover everything. They're rarely updated, that sort of thing. So, yeah, uh, if they're not covering all aspects of security, that's that's bad, right? Then we get to move into the medium to large. And the reason that this range is so big is because it is really in this range that like bigger is worse. You start at that 5,000 range and it just gets worse and worse and worse and worse and worse as it goes up. Because like any network, you know, not just a computer network, but you know, a, a friend network or whatever, the more nodes that you have in that network, the more connections can happen between those nodes and the more things that can go wrong with all of those connections, right? So if the company has really dedicated money to like their admin and security budget, they can be good. But in this range, generally not good, not, not good, not super mature, et cetera. And then we move into the very large environments. When I started here, 
I thought to myself, any environment this large just has to be a complete cluster. I have been pleasantly shocked time and time again that once you get up to a certain size, you've got an admin team that's well supported, you've got a security team that's able to assess their own environment properly and offer support. And more importantly, like the security policies and the maintenance processes and all of these things are well defined, regularly updated, and you know, it's it's almost like the machine takes over for the humans, right? And, you know, chat GPT and me, we're buddies now. I'll let him take care of, of me or of my, my workplace. I, I I knew all your blogs sounded strangely robotic lately. <laughs> I wasn't going to say anything. I was giving you the benefit of the doubt. <laughs> so would you still... 530 in the morning. <laughs> so do you think it's, do you think it's like that kind of growth problem where it's, you could get very mature on the small and very small because you're, because you are small, there's less barriers for entry. And then all of a sudden, especially when you get to things like startups and things like that, you balloon very quickly from medium to large. And that, that, that balance goes all the way the wrong way. Now, all of a sudden you're dropping things, things aren't current anymore. And you don't you don't get your stuff together until that kind of growth spurt stops and you get to be a very large environment and then the maturity comes it, it's funny how the maturity starts when you're little and then and then comes back later when you're very very large yeah well it's it's kind of like i imagine uh, maybe you were like this as a teenager you kind of grew faster then your body could really support and you get the growing pains and that sort of thing. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'm this big. <laughs> but yeah, you, you know, you, you've got a growth yes, level. This, yes, this t-shirt fits me properly. Why would you ask that? <laughs> of course Love it's it. my size. <laughs> uh, but yeah, yeah, a bubble, but then the scaffolding grows up underneath over time. So yeah, I think that's that's really what, what explains that. So speaking of over time, Age, that's another thing that we really look at. And uh, I threw this quote up here because I think it really applies to uh, to Danny and Danny and myself both. Can you believe they let us do this together? I know, it's ridiculous. So uh, new environments, right? Stood up in the last five years since Server 2019 has come out. You would expect that these are just shimmering, perfect. Everyone that we've come across that has been stood up in the last three to five years is just a mess of defaults, out of the box defaults for Microsoft. And to this day, Microsoft continues to provide us with less than less than the best defaults. Um, and they're just really in these environments hasn't been enough time for the staff to kind of get in there and twist all the knobs and flip all the switches and figure out exactly what they really want to do. Take some time. You may not, you may not know this, but Active Directory is a little complex. So. Well, that's not what the documentation led me to believe. <laughs> but right now, just halfway through your thing, I'm thinking if I was uh, in your job and, and a consultant and I would have so much hubris to say that I could write a report without seeing your environment ever, if I see a new environment that is a medium to large, that's like a double hit, right? Like that, because just be, new does not necessarily mean small and, right. and large does not necessarily mean old. So exactly. these two things put together, you're already forming Bad. that kind of picture of like, this is not going to be great or I'm prepared for things to really go sideways here. Right, right. So then we also have uh, the middle-aged ones. Um, <laughs> Uh, Come on, how many people watching this have not actually done this pose literally today? <laughs> I did it like four times already today. Yeah, if um, you're on the yeah. East Coast, you've had a good six hours already to to have your head in your hands at least a few times. <laughs> but yeah, these, these environments we're talking about, um, you know, th they're generally a little more, a uh, little more mature because they're not super old. They don't have a ton of crap built up. And the people that built them are probably still in your in your environment. So they actually have knowledge about why they set things up 
the way that they did. And then uh, last up, <laughs> we got old age. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I love the gifts that you threw in here, Danny. Thank I, you. I must admit. <laughs> I'm, I'm only going to take credit for the ones that you like. And the ones that you <laughs> don't like, I'm going to blame on you. Ah, oh, man. Around server 2012, Microsoft really kind of made a change in how they wanted to secure things. They sort of had a built up, um, it, we, we now have a, a knowledge base to work off of as far as securing things, right? Before that, eh, not so much. It was kind of, uh, you know, the internet was still still a baby. We didn't have uh, GitHub and Stack Overflow nearly as much as we have now. And um, people just kind of did what they needed to do to get things working, right? And a lot of that cruft still just hangs on because the people that set it up have left. They've gone on to, to greener pastures, right? So nobody knows what they did. Nobody touches anything because they don't want to break anything, et cetera. So when we see an, a, a super old environment, we're, we're prepared for the worst. That being said, it's kind of wild card because sometimes those people are still around and they've really taken the time to get things right. So I consider this one kind of could be bad, could be good, right? And the last thing that I'm looking at when I am talking to, uh, or what, during a kickoff call or, you know, a scoping call is just to see who is driving the assessment. Because, yeah, lots of drivers, only one wheel. Uh, we typically see all of our assessments are driven by either the C-suite, the security team, and external consultants, sometimes paid, sometimes unpaid, uh, and uh, operations and admin. Now, here's the one thing that I, I, I want to make sure that the audience remembers as they're listening to this and thinking about this. There are a lot of assumptions being made just by us here doing this. How many of those assumptions are also being made on your end, right? Maybe you are the one on these kind of projects and in and, and charge of these networks or people are PMing things that are also making this like this is this is more this is more less about us making memes in these slides and more about challenging those assumptions because it's really hard to be um, that um, introspective and take time to think about those things when you're putting out so many fires at once. So. The, the real the big crux of this is to challenge the assumptions of an environment that you've been in for a very long time and think about oh are we actually doing it the way that i thought we were and are we good are we better than we thought we were or are we just way worse than we thought we were and we will we will touch on some of that in just a little bit here so um generally when we see like a the c-suite folks uh especially a CISO or a cto uh drive an assessment and you know get in contact with us initially and, and kind of lead the whole the whole assessment i can assume they are probably pretty mature they know they're in good shape and they want to identify the gaps that they have but yet another wild card here which is the new CISO. the new CISO comes along and the new CISO really has no idea how things are looking they just want to know so yet again another gap identification thing but uh Sometimes we've had it come across where it's it's a very bad environment, unfortunately. Now, security team, this is pretty straightforward. <laughs> oh, man. Security team generally knows what's up with their environment. And they generally, if they are leading it, it seems to be because they want the ops and admin team to get in gear. Unfortunately, security teams, unless they are, you know, work for Trimark and, and, you know, a few few other companies are not exactly subject matter experts on AD because it is so complex. So they come to us and they just know that they're less mature and they need to be built up. Yeah. One of the, one of the really good things that the reason why uh, I think we do so well at what we do is Trimark, our assessments in particular and our expertise they really shine for that new executive, that new CISO, because that new CISO wants to know what they've inherited, much like you have a situation where you're doing like um, uh, M&A, right? Mergers and acquisitions. You don't know the, like the ugly thing that you just got handed to you. So both of those things, right? The unknown is really where we do 
the bulk of our our work and where the value really is to like figure out like what i just get handed yeah uh another common one uh but is external consulting and that <laughs> may be paid that may be paid that may be unpaid external consulting uh we've had both <laughs> referred to us generally yeah, one way or the pirates. other you're paying somebody <laughs> you're paying somebody that's right uh generally these are probably pretty immature there's a reason that they were referred to us you know they failed multiple pen tests they got an unexpected pen test uh, with uh you know uh what, what was that called the unexpected encryption event yeah that was that's the good one that i, <laughs> I haven't heard that one unexpected yeah. encryption event <laughs> yes so that happens they come to us right and uh lastly the real wild card here and this man that beard that hair that is i think you, i thought it was high time that we give the old gray beards somebody better to look up to like we all we know the picture that we were given coming up like it's time for a revamp i That's don't want right. to talk to that guy either when i when i have to summon him <laughs> how handsome he looks <laughs> but yeah this is definite wild card i mean Sometimes the admin team has the full support of their their management and they just, you know, kind of want to take it to the next level. Other times they really, they just don't know what they don't know. And yet again, we bring Trimark in, they tell us what, what we don't know and uh, we can fix it. So just to, to kind of summarize what we've, what we've learned so far, less mature environments, generally medium to large, very new, and referred to us by an external consultant. The wild card ones are the small ones, the very old ones, and it's led by the security team or operations, right? And the most, the more mature ones, the ones that I love to work on, stood up in the last 10 years, driven by the CISO, and they are either super huge or super tiny. Love to work on those ones, super easy. <laughs> Don't really learn a lot, but I can help a lot. I would say you probably learn more from the that combination of what would, so would it be brand new, medium sized with an external person coming to you. Yeah. Yeah. And then you, you do that. And that went over to Scott. Yeah. Yeah. So like, I'm, I'm really busy right now. Can somebody else take this one? <laughs> yeah, like Scott, I don't think you know enough about these things. Like, why don't you take this one? <laughs> so we're, we're about to dig into uh, now the most common findings at each maturity level. Right. And, so just take a moment to think about your environment. Do you feel like you strongly fit into any one of these? And, and just keep that in mind, all right, as we go through these issues. And then we'll, we'll wrap this up at the end and see if you continue to fit into that mold. So as mentioned earlier, we all kind of swim in the same ecosystem. There's, there's kind of just, we all work off of the same knowledge base. We all follow the same sort of, uh, you know, thought leaders, whatever that means. So there are, <laughs> there are a huge number of things that really are pretty common in all environments. So first off, the common stuff. Insecure defaults, conflicting guidance, integrations, vendor requirements, and just hard stuff. And if you're wondering what that common, what those pictures are. Please tell me, because I went through this and I was like, I'm going to keep this graphic. I don't get it, but it's, it's, it'll stay until Jake tells me what it is. It's common stuff. It's a common milkweed. It's a common garter snake. It's a common snapping turtle. And it's a common grackle. You nerd. Yup. That's like, okay. Listen, we got to have a little fun. In I know things, what'll right? hook the audience a picture of the common milkweed. I'll get them. Yep. Somebody is super excited that I put common milkweed on here. Somebody. It's Jim. It's got to be Jim. Jim's going to be Jim. the one excited. Jim. Yeah, you're right. You're if right. anybody's excited about the common milkweed, it's going to be Jim. <laughs> so, as we mentioned before, like Microsoft defaults are still, there are still a, a, a large number of insecurities in the defaults of a lot of various parts of Active Directory. Number one being Active Directory admins. So that when we talk about Active Directory admins, we're talking about uh, the domain administrator's account, domain admins, enterprise admins, and schema admins. 
So those are all protected by a process called admin SD holder. Make sure that nobody can really change permissions on those groups. But there are some higher level protections that AD admins should receive out of the box and simply don't. And one of those is just being marked as sensitive. So by default, any account that is configured for delegation, which is also another word for impersonation, they can impersonate any account in the environment that is not marked as sensitive. To me, it seems pretty straightforward. If it's an AD admin, they should just be marked as sensitive by default. Uh, another one. You imagine is, you're going to see these things in what kind of environment? Like all environments. You look at, all, this so this is, is across all the board. environments. This is across the board. Small, medium, is, large, old, new, middle. Everything. This is right. a large number of these that I'm going to refer over the next next couple of slides are like everybody. Everybody's doing this wrong. So, and it's again, it's because of the defaults thing, right? Um, there's something called the protected users group which was brought about in around server 2012, uh, which adds on top of uh, marking uh, accounts as sensitive, also does things like limits Kerberos lifetime, eliminates the use of NTLM authentication, et cetera. A lot of additional protections that are not really necessary if you're doing everything else properly, but nobody's doing everything else properly. So AD admins should just go into this protected users group by default. And then weak password policy, out of the box, AD has a seven character password policy. That could be cracked like yesterday with modern GPU cracking rigs, right? So how many do you need? Danny, we talked about this last webcast. How many characters do you need in your password? <laughs> 16? More, the answer 32. is just more. 30, more, oh, just more. Okay. Just more. Sorry. Whatever that was a you have now. question. <laughs> it's just more. You you just need to continually increase your your minimum password length. Um, use, and then I lastly, use I use sentences of things. I don't even do like a lot of the time. Like, I'm not going to be like, oh, all the A's have to be at so blah 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 blah. I'll throw in an uh, exclamation point if I'm feeling feeling spicy, but uh, I'm I make a sentence about things. Yeah, heck yeah. I just let my password manager make it up, and I don't even ever learn it. That that works better. Yeah, that too. Uh, and then last thing on here, insufficient auditing. So um, by default, uh, there's something called, or there was something called advanced auditing, which was added back in server 2008. By default, that's not even enabled out of the box. And even when it is enabled, the default setup really misses a ton of useful events. So yeah, these are things, everything on this screen, stuff that we see all the time. Stale guidance, not even necessarily just stale, but also conflicting guidance at certain points, right? So NIST came out with 800-53 a couple years back, and the whole world just lost its mind. Like, cool, I don't need to expire passwords anymore. We're like, yeah, but you don't need to expire passwords anymore if you have all these other compensating controls in place that nobody has. They read the, you don't need to expire passwords anymore. and Disabled it on everybody, right? We end up seeing AD admins with old passwords almost on every single uh, engagement that we do. And we're talking years, 10 years, 15 years. The oldest that I've seen was an AD admin with a 17 year old password. I don't know what you did 17 years ago for passwords, but I can tell you mine. You want to know it from 17 years ago? <laughs> no, don't worry. I have it already. I know, I'm sure you do, everybody does, because it was only eight characters long. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's it, without you know strapping on some additional, uh, either additional packages or you know just really modifying the way that you handle Active Directory, you can't even really get to NIST 853 level of, of support. So, um, Another thing is just regular users being virtual infrastructure admins. Um, it's This is kind of a, again, conflicting AD admins should not be your virtual infrastructure admins, but regular users don't receive the protections that AD admins do by default. So it's, you're kind of torn. So 
we still don't have a really good answer for for what should be done there um other than having a completely separate group of you know virtual infrastructure administrators that have separate passwords specifically that they use for virtual infrastructure administration etc um and then now we get to talk about the thing uh that <laughs> i like a lot because it's adcs uh, <laughs> But integrations, these are things that really, really tightly integrate with Active Directory. And when I say tightly integrate, you'll understand what I mean. Exchange, right? We've all dealt with it. We've all gotten our mail through it at some time. Almost every environment that we assess has uh, indicators that on-prem exchange ex existed at least once in the time of, uh, of the environment existing. And by default, exchange is installed in a shared permissions model which makes Exchange incredibly powerful, almost on par with a domain controller. So you add that to the fact that a lot of Exchange servers are still web-facing, and you just, you know, basically a hole's big enough you could drive a truck through, right? Jake, I have a question. Can I interrupt you for a question? You can. Uh, Raj in the chat asks, uh, when you say separate creds for virtual infrastructure admins, is that for VMware or Hyper-V? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Both. <laughs> yes. Funny you ask, Raj. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, so yeah, Active Directory Certificate Services, I, I have learned way more about this than I ever needed to because I was the silly one that said, yes, we can add that to the ADSA and I'll help write it. Uh, yeah, right. Look it's, at you caring about something where it ain't your turn to care about it. Right? <laughs> so, like, it's really cool that Microsoft gives us a PKI, and it's really cool that it's super easy to set up. However, it makes it incredibly easy to just own Active Directory, like, out of the box almost. It does require a little bit of misconfiguration to get there. This is not an insecure default, but it is one step away. So if you have ADCS in your environment, we are likely going to find at least, we, we're going to find high findings no matter, no matter what. And we probably will find a critical finding. Just happens all the time. And then I know Danny doesn't like to say it, but enter ID, connect. I know, I know. <laughs> You're, you're going to have to drag Azure AD out of my vernacular over my cold, dead body. As, uh, as my, my, soul, my soul will have to leave before my, uh, my, me saying uh, Azure AD will leave my vocabulary. Nice. Uh, yet again, something that, that Microsoft made super easy to set up. Next, 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 finish. Boom. You are now replicating all of your on-prem AD stuff into the cloud, right? At no point is there really any indication exactly how powerful the service account that runs that and the server that hosts that service account really are. They can take an entire, that service account can take an entire copy of your Active Directory environment. If that host that runs that service is compromised, the attacker now can get a copy of your, your entire Active Directory. All three of these are basically tier zero slash control plane, whatever you want to call it, level of sensitivity, but almost no one protects them as such. Very rarely will we, we come across an environment where they are truly treated just as, as sensitive as like a domain controller is. And then <laughs> vendor requirements, uh, despite what your vendor says, your service account probably does not need to be in domain admins. You probably can limit it down to a very small subset of, of actually required rights and still use that service. There are, there are some exceptions, Veeam, Nessus, if you're scanning tier zero objects, et cetera. Internet connect to coffee makers. Yes. Oh yeah. Yeah. Throw that on there. Your printer definitely needs domain admin, but not, I'm joking people. I'm joking. <laughs> Please don't do that. Please don't do that. I I must admit my sins. We had uh, used one of our domain admin accounts for a scanner 
um, when I first started at my last job. Yeah. Hey, it worked. <laughs> you know how like in A Christmas Carol, Bob Marley has all the chains around his neck from all the messed up stuff he did over the time? That's going to be one of your chains. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Uh, and then ADCS, got to bring it up again, right? Gee, Despite, what your vendor... <laughs> Despite what your vendor says, like, you don't need to give the domain users group uh, the ability to request a certificate in the name of any other user. It just, it's not something you need to do. Limit that down to a service account that's actually handing out the certificates or, you know, limit it to a small group or enable manager approval, et cetera. You don't need to do, I'm not going to name names. We'll, we'll move on. <laughs> <laughs> and I've mentioned this a few times, but there is some stuff that is really just, just pretty hard to get done properly, right? So we're talking about privilege access workstations. Be honest with yourself. Do you do all of your AD administration tasks from a separate physical device, which has no software installed and no internet access? No. Absolutely. <laughs> Wait, whose AD are you administering? Don't worry about it. <laughs> that's, that's their problem, not yours. That's right. That's right. Uh, but yeah, it's. I mean, it's it's difficult to do properly, and it's expensive, and it's very limiting. So we totally understand why it's why why we don't see it a lot but if you're serious about security like you need to get that done that that's one of the things that will move you into that more mature level and then these last three up here uh what do we call these the the trio of doom i don't know but ntlm v1 is super susceptible to relaying if you have ntlm v1 enabled in your environment you're gonna get attackers don't need to learn you know crack passwords they just need to steal a hash of that ntlm hash and use that basically as their credentials smb v1 was released like 30 years ago and it really wasn't designed with security in mind to begin with and then ldap super useful protocol you know active directory is built on ldap but if you're using that does not have LDAP signing and LDAP channel binding, which uh, should be in the handout that, that Danny's given out, um, if you don't have those enabled, you're just going to be uh, you know, abused by adversary in the middle attacks. So all these protocols are super old and they all have hardened, either hardened versions or they've been hardened in various ways but we still continue to see these three just in their insecure states. And that's because non windows devices exist. And as much uh, as we all, yeah. Yeah. Something in the chat um, from um, 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 Anthony NTLM with a print server is a nightmare in my environment, more of a rant than a question. <laughs> yes. NTLM plus print server, we consider a critical finding. NTLM v1 plus print server is a critical finding that could be abused six ways to Sunday today by any user in your environment. Take that care. Take care of that one as soon as you possibly can, Anthony. Um, but yeah, like non Windows devices just have, you know, it, it's hard to, to get up to snuff on these newer protocols, but we will say that that's less, uh, we see that less and less and less. We see these non-Windows devices that can't support these newer protocols. So um, this is becoming less of a concern, but it is still hard to do. So we talked about the common stuff that we're seeing all the time. Let's talk about the things that I see in less mature environments. So again, think about those findings that you just saw. Do those fit you? Probably. These next ones, See if they fit you too. So in the less mature environments, it's just it's just a host of people not knowing what what they really need to do, basically. So improper account tiering. What is account tiering? It's a separation of duties among accounts, actually. So we're only going to talk about tier zero accounts here, but that is the accounts that manage your identities in your environment. So we're talking the domain admin accounts, 
uh, the administrator accounts, the uh, enterprise admin accounts, and schema admins, right? Those accounts should, accounts that do that role should never be used for any other sort of, a, sort of work, period. You're doing that well. It's very difficult for an attacker to find those credentials hiding in places. Uh, and then unintentional AD admins. So in these less mature environments, often through self-reflection and or uh, bonus administration from, from Russia, they realize they're less mature. And so they hire an MSP or an MSSP and you know, create accounts for that MSP, add those to the AD admin groups, and then the MSP adds additional accounts to their, their group, et cetera, et cetera. And before you know it, you've got 249 uh, AD admins in a an environment of a thousand people. And uh, nobody knows the higher, right? this is where, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Back That's up upon backup upon backup. Yeah, just just call him. He's got He's got the same rights I do, it's fine. Is that not defense in depth? Am I doing that wrong? <laughs> is that not what they meant? Uh, but yeah, so luckily both of these are pretty easy to remedy. I mean, account tiering, you, if you've ever worked in the Linux world, you don't log into root, same thing here. You know, you don't log into your domain admin. I know you're a, you're a login as root all the time guy. But Sue is so hard. <laughs> You know how much so, time I would waste a year by doing that? Like an hour. <laughs> One hour per year. Uh, another thing that we come across all the time in these less mature environments is a lack of local administrator password management. So if you're not managing those passwords, it is very likely, and we will make the assumption, that you have the same password set on all computers across the environment. And when that happens, you get the viral spread, like you see in this GIF on the right, right? Attacker gets into one spot and they use that same username and password to spider out all through your network. Lateral movement is what it's called. Microsoft at first gave us this really easy way to manage local administrator accounts called group policy preferences, right? Type in the password, push go, that group policy applies to all the computers. Boom, new password applied for the local administrator account. And if you were really fancy, you would like, this OU has this uh, password, you know, and this, this OU full of computers has this password. So you would still minimize the spread. Um, and then Microsoft published the key that encrypted those passwords. Just published the key, just on a help net article. Oops, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so Oopsie they quickly realized their mistake and, um, and then made it so you couldn't use your group policy preferences anymore and then replaced it with something called LAPS or local administrator password solution. And that was released in 2015. At first it was a little difficult to use. You had to, you know, some custom PowerShell scripts and stuff, but nowadays it is built into windows 11. Use it. There is no excuse at this point. It is super easy to use. It creates a individual password for every single computer in your environment. It is, there, there's no excuse at this point. But I mean, just uh, a month ago, did an assessment that and saw that. So um, another one that we see in these smaller, uh, sorry, less mature environments is that domain controllers are just not treated like the tier zero objects that they are, right? Uh, we have, <laughs> as part of our assessment, we look at your domain controllers to see all the software that's installed. And we have seen more often than not, these domain controllers getting treated like regular old servers. We see third-party web browsers, we see SQL server installations, we see client management utilities, audio video editing tools, like what are you doing on your, on your domain controller here? Um, development tools, it's just, you name it, like TikTok videos. Tic oh, oh, that makes sense for you. <laughs> How else am I supposed but, to edit all my dances? 
Oh, uh, man. But yeah, like to make controllers aren't servers, like you shouldn't even consider them a server. Like it's just they're 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 an island shrouded in mystery that one should never touch, right? And then some things that are like not really Active Directory related, but I can't help but mention them is that in these less mature environments, we do regularly still see, uh, you know, no no sim, no security information and event management. Um, and a sim just takes all of the logs from your entire environment, or as many as you can feed it for whatever Splunk is going to charge you, um, and kind of distills it into alerts that are actually actionable, right? Well, now it's what Cisco is going to charge you, but okay, I get it. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Right. Um, so yeah, if you don't have a sim now, uh, go get one. Um, you know, we've got Blue Mira has a a free tier. Uh, Security Onion has a completely free product if you've got the the hardware to run it on. Um, yeah, that there there are some free and cheap things out there that you can do. And if not, um, yeah, Splunk Splunk is great. We like Splunk. <laughs> uh, and then no MFA uh, on external access. So put it on everything. MFA should just be everything. Like whatever you can put it on, just put MFA on everything. And and as strong as you possibly can. Uh, you know, don't if if you can only do SMS MFA, do that. If you if you can do something stronger, please do. MFA is great. I do it. I do it in a sense at home. I have the top lock on on my back door uh, to be a, a, a keypad, and then I have a separate regular key for the bottom lock that my wife always forgets. Uh, so, bam, keep her out. <laughs> MFA works. It just works. It works everywhere. It does work. Very true. So we talked about the less mature. Let's talk about you more mature folks, because you think you're doing all that you can. And really, which is arguably the more dangerous posture, I say, is. because you uh, because it's the false sense of security. And if you have that false sense of security, you're probably in a bigger environment with lots more valuable stuff, and you think you're great at it. And it's not. This is another thing that Jake is gonna take one look at and say, I, I bet, yes, but that, yes, exactly. So first off, we've got Pam. That's not the Pam we like, though. No, we want a different Pam. That's, That's the Pam better. we like. Yeah. So Pam, privileged access management is what we're talking about here, right? So we got CyberArk, we got Secret Server, those sorts. They are theoretically supposed to be a vault that holds your passwords and rotates passwords for you, so that way you know the password is changing on a regular basis and just a, you know, really strictly controlling who has access to what, et cetera. But more, very often, not more often than not, but often enough in these, these more mature environments, the PAM that has been installed is either not being used to its fullest. So, you know, it can, it can change passwords automatically. It can do that local administrator management that we talked about, right? It can change server account, uh, service account passwords, domain admin account passwords. And it seems like they're not really being used for that. Or that if they are, it's like, you know, we only rotate passwords when they're checked out. And, you know, it's just not really configured properly. Um, but the worst is when we come across a, a PAM system that has an administrative group that is loaded with regular users. Any attacker worth their salt is going to come in and they're going to be looking, especially if they know you're a more mature environment, right? They come into this more mature environment. They're like, ah, all the easy stuff. We, we, we're going to skip right past that. Let's go right to see if we can attack their PAM administrators. And those PAM administrators just have a, you know, a target on their back at that point. So I like it right when you said that your dog just like sighed and laid his head back down for dramatic effect. <laughs> she, she knows. She knows. <laughs> I just uh, about this, stuff. <laughs> this this other one here, poorly the configured way, FGPP. Yes. I want to bring something up real quick. Okay. Jake said a couple, especially my big eyeball slides. They're like, it seems kind of aggressive for a webcast. And I said, says the man who has a literal knife in one dude's hand 
getting ready to stab somebody. That's his graphic. I want that on the record. That that would be the my eyeballs were aggressive, but it wasn't care. They didn't have butcher knives coming out of them. <laughs> it is I wanted to have a, a true representation of what would happen if your management system is not properly secured. It looks, right. you know, okay. looks all happy and yeah. So aggressive. But uh, yeah, fine grained password policies. Those are uh, what we're talking about here. They were re or came out in server 2008, and that was just to handle like the the one size fits all thing that was in older versions of Active Directory where you could only have one password policy for your entire domain. Um, in my previous job, uh, we actually had separate child domains specifically to handle these different domain password policies. Um, and, you know, because we had different uh, groups that had different legal requirements. So in 2008, Microsoft released fine-grained password policies, which allowed multiple password policies to exist in a domain. And that means things like AD admins could be better secured, have a longer password requirement, you know, uh, complexity required. And then it also allowed for systems that did not support long passwords or complex passwords, et cetera. Looking at you as 400 back when I started working at my old job, had to, yeah, had to downgrade the password complexity for whatever reason to like six characters, it was wild. Um, so in these more mature companies, we often see a really either it just straight out of the box default password policy, which we discussed seven characters long, right? Or even worse, we've seen three, we've seen zero character password policies. And when presented with a, Hey, your default password policy sucks. I'm like, Oh, we, we use fine grained password policies. And then we look. I yes. got a question in chat uh, from Mike. Mike says, you mentioned that Pam changing password at check-in was a misconfiguration. What's the best practice? Uh, it should be changed. There should be a time and a checkout. So even if it doesn't get checked out in a regular phrase or regular time, you still want to have it changed on a regular basis. Cool. Cool. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. Um, but yeah, so, so we tell them your default password policy sucks. They say, we've got fine grained password policies and we're like, yeah, but your fine grained password policies only apply to eight of your 40,000 people. Uh, so if you're using fine grained password policies, make sure that every single person is covered. If you have a bad password policy, what a better option is upgrade that, that default password policy to what you, the bare minimum that you can get away with, and then go beyond that with your fine grained password policies. So let's go ahead and wrap up and see. We talked about this earlier, right? Wanted you to go into the common findings with where you thought you were. Are you less mature? Are you more mature? Are you somewhere in the middle? Take a look at what we just discussed. Do you have proper account tearing in place? Are you using laps? Cool, you're probably moved on to, you know, the more common level of maturity. If you've got Pam, you're probably in a more mature place. Dig into those things, right? Use this, this graphic here as kind of a stepping stone. Where are you? See where you, where you actually fall, and then resolve all those things, move on to the next level of maturity resolve those, move on. And then when you're all done and you think you're as secure as you could possibly be, give us a call. We'll find something else. <laughs> <laughs> we always do. We always do. I mean, that, Brandon talked about this last, uh, you know, last webcast. We, what, still 75% of our customers were, were coming out with a critical finding, at least one critical finding. And yeah. Even after resolving that, still only a good, you know, probably 40% are at a place where we where we want them to be. So, yeah. So, you got any more questions there, Danny? If not. We'll show up to show up that last slide while I talk for a second. Um, All right, cool. No, we, we uh, so yeah, we, we did have, uh, we, we did have, we answered most of the questions. Um, okay. Now, to be sure, we, we covered a lot 
in this, right? The 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 whole the basic premise was to get you thinking about your assumptions based off of what we have seen hundreds of times over these things. A lot of these topics, we are very big on helping you operationally, right? So you don't even, you could just go to hub.trimarksecurity.com. It's where we put all of our research, where we put all of our blogs, and it digs into a lot of this of, if you see this, here's the exact way that you're gonna wanna go about remediating this, right? We have top tens and top fives and all kinds of stuff to to be able to sit here and like be like, okay, now here are all the steps to do these things. That would be a four hour webcast. That would be like how Jim writes a blog. Jim doesn't write a blog, he writes a white paper every time. Um, so if there is something that we covered in here, you're like, oh my God, that was a great conversation. I really wish you would have delved deeper into that. Shoot us a message, right? Like wherever you got, uh, again, the slides up right there for our link tree and for and for Jake's link tree, he has his own because he likes to promote himself. Even though I said no, don't do that, but go right ahead. Why not? Go nuts. Um, no, that's fine. We love our guys. <laughs> um, you're like, oh, it's really cracking the whip. Um, so we have a lot of this. If you have questions, reach out to Jake. Reach out to us at Trimark. Find us on Twitter at Trimark Security, uh, and you can always shoot us a DM. And be like, wow, I really wish you guys would like go deeper into this area or go deeper into this area. We're constantly finding new things to talk about and write about. Because uh, again, we're big on the operational side of it. We're big on the remediation. We don't just like to throw stuff in your laps and go, look at all the stuff you got to deal with. Okay, bye. Um, so that's what we do with these things. Um, and listen, in addition to all of our assessments, you want to go that way, uh, trimarksecurity.com slash services. Uh, we are launching, we're launching a new product. You might want to go check it out. It is trimarkvision.com. Uh, if you like what we're talking about, uh, you know, all the assessments, all the findings that we do, how would you like to see it in a UI? Just right there for you. And you, you can see all your force and you can see all your trust and see all those findings without having to read something on paper. Trimarkvision.com might really want to be a site you go to. I'll even put it in the chat for you, so don't forget it. Um, <laughs> but yes, blogs, uh, social media. We do uh, an hour-long happy hour on Twitch every single Friday uh, where we have guests. We just had Paul Asadorian was just on. Um, we had Dave Kennedy on. We had Carlos Perez. We do all of this to so that you have this stuff. This will be uploaded shortly. It'll be up on our YouTube. Uh, it'll also be up on the on, on the hub on hub.trimarksecurity.com. Uh, so all of this stuff is for you. If you have more questions, if you have more comments, we'd really love to hear from you. Uh, shoot us an email. You can find Jake on Twitter. You want to give your Twitter? Sure. I don't really uh, do much there, but dot 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 horse that's d-o-t 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 literally spelled out dot yeah and then he also has his link to his mastodon and all, and all kinds of things so yeah. lots of places to to get up with us including wild west hacking fest next week in deadwood south dakota we are a proud sponsor of wild west hacking fest jake and jim will actually be giving a talk next week at hacking fest and possibly releasing a new tool maybe could happen it's definitely going to happen. They have a new tool. You should check it out. It's definitely happening. Um, and then after that, we got, we got Shmu in January. Um, we got so much coming up. TrimarkSecurity.com has all that stuff. We want to thank everybody for hanging out. Uh, hopefully you got your handout. That was uh, for the uh, blog by Scott. And yeah, if you want more, uh, we'll sign, sign up for our newsletter. You'll get notified always of every time we do a webcast. And we thank you, everybody, so much for being here, for myself, uh, for Jay Kildreth, and for all of Trimark Security. Uh, we will see everybody next time.